Uh, today we'll be talking about occupational lung disease. And you, you should know that all the pulmonary diseases, all the known pulmonary diseases, has, diseases has got, uh, is caused by uh, in, uh, environmental agent and some uh, factors, other factors like uh, genetic risks. That means for every pulmonary uh, diseases, uh, there is some uh, role of the environmental agent. However, uh, for the case of occupational lung disease, uh, it has got uh, more role. And however, uh, with uh, However, the occupational lung diseases are uh, multifactorial with uh, occupational and environmental factors interacting with other factors such as smoking and genetic risks. Then the question arises, why to differentiate other pulmonary disease and occupational pulmonary diseases? Because uh, in the cases of occupational pulmonary diseases, uh, if we uh, only give the pharmacological therapy, patient may not do good. Uh, for the treatment, uh, we should also do the cessation of the exp exposure to the offending agent. So for that also, we should find out if the patient is having the pulmonary symptom due to the occupational exposure or not. And for, uh, for all the exposed patients, uh, we may identify them as having the disease or prevent them from getting it. And also in addition, new association between the exposure of, and disease may be identified so it is very important uh, for all the patient who has got pulmonary symptoms to ask if they have got any offending exposure, they have got any exposure to the offending agents. So how to find out if there is an exposure or not, uh, it is all done by the history. So history taking is of paramount importance in such cases. You must ask the patient if the patient presented to, presents to you with a cough, shortness of breath or chest pain or any of the pulmonary symptoms, then you must ask the patient if she is have, uh, about the workplace. You should uh, ask the patient about the presence of visible dust, chemical odors or the site and ventilation of the workplace. You should ask the patient if they are uh, given proper respiratory protective equipment uh, during their work and you, whether their co-worker also have similar complaints and you should also look for the temporal association of exposure at work and symptoms. Symptoms uh, that means when you ask a patient, like uh, when you when do you get the most of the symptoms, or is are there any periods when you are symptom free? Then the patient will typically say that uh, there is more symptom when they are in the workplace, and the, they get a relief of the symptom when on the weekend days. This also all leads to the occupational lung disease. Now, moving on to uh, you suspect of patient with occupational lung disease. Now, what to do next? What are the laboratory tests that you can do? And that includes function uh, to look for the functional capacity of the lung. And that is done by measuring the first expiratory volume. And uh, occupational lung disease has got quite a spectrum of disease. And there are multiple various diseases we'll, we'll be discussing soon. And the occupational lung disease patient may present with uh, the features of restrictive lung disease like interstitial lung disease to obstructive lung disease features like COPD and asthma. So when we measure uh, for the lung volume, we look for first expiratory volume and it may come as a restrictive pattern or as an obstructive pattern. And the next uh, laboratory test that we can do is chest radiograph. And in chest radiograph, you can you may see some small rounded opacities uh, that are typically seen in case of silicosis or cold workers pneumoconosis, or you may even see some linear opacities as in asbestosis. And uh, in case of uh, some suspected case, you can also look for con com you can also ask for conventional computed tomography, which is more sensitive to detection of the pleural thickening, thickening, especially in the case of uh, asbestosis. That is a patient who has got occupational exp exposure to asbestos. And the other. Uh, Test include screen pre, skin prick testing, or even you can look for a specific immunoglobin E or immunoglobin G antibody titers. And uh, rarely in some cases, even you may ask order a patient for a bronchoscopy to obtain a transbronchial biopsy of the lung tissue so that you can do the histological diagnosis, like in case of uh, bedilium bedi, disease, chronic bedilium disease, you may get a granuloma. And in some cases, rarely you may ask for a video assisted thoracoscopic surgery to obtain a large sample of lung tissue so that you can do a diagnosis of the environment uh, occupational lung disease, like in case of hypersensitivity pneumonitis or giant cell interstitial pneumonitis. 
as i've told you there is like a various range of disease that can be caused due to the occupational exposure various range of lung disease and that may range from occupational asthma reactive airway dysfunction syndrome or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease as we have already dis, uh, discussed in detail about the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease you people know that the patient who are who have uh, done smoking or who are exposed to the dust and smoke of the environment they are more prone to the to get the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and all the diseases as long this is due to exposure to inorganic dust like silica asbestos or coal and the other organic patient who gets exposed to organic dust like similarly in our country itself uh, agriculture best country so the most of the farmer they are exposed to so many of the organic dust and they may present with occupational lung disease and we should correctly identify this patient and other diseases that may cause uh that may be caused due to the occupational exposure include lung cancer and even occupational pneumonia that means almost each and every disease of the respiratory system can be due to occupational cause so for each and every disease you have to take a proper detailed history about the uh, symptoms and about the occupation and the occupational exposure now moving on to the individual topic first we will be talking about occupational asthma and when to suspect a patient had occupational asthma a young working male uh, present to you with new onset asthma and the patient typically gives you the uh, feature history that uh, the patient becomes symptom free uh, when the patient is away from the work then you should think that the patient might have occupational asthma and this is more common in patient who are smokers and who have a tobacco history of a tobacco and the asthmatic symptom usually develop within the first few years of em employment but are classically preceded by a latent period and the confirmation of the occupational asthma is done like as a bronchial asthma that is by looking at the pulmonary function test and for a patient who have occupational asthma the prognosis is favorable if uh, the patient has a history of short uh, short history of symptoms and the patient has a normal lung function at the time of diagnosis and uh, if uh, we couldn't correctly identify the asthma is due to occup uh, occupational exposure and the patient couldn't avoid the exposure uh, then the man is uh, and then there may not be any resolution so we should reduce and avoid the exposure and uh, if after even the after the avoidance of the exposure the patient has a persistent symptom then we should manage the patient according to the case of or the case of bronchial asthma and the most uh, frequently reported causes of the causative agent of the occupational asthma include isocyanides flour and grain dust latex animals and uh, the people who typically presented uh, with this uh, occupational asthma include nurses bakers and pastry makers chemical workers and the next uh, very common disease uh, that is attributed to occupational cause is include reactive uh, airway dysfunction syndrome and this refers to the development of the persistent asthma like syndrome following the inhalation of an airway irritant and uh, you people should know that a single specific exposure to a gas smoke fume or vapor in a very high concentration may also lead to this syndrome and in this the patient present with shortness acute onset after exposure to some fumes or vapors or uh, the patient is a sort of born survivor patient and the patient uh, present with to you with a wheeze or shortness of breath and then at that time you should look for the pulmonary function test and it's uh, so air flow obstruction and airway hyperreactivity and the asthma management is similar to bronchial asthma however in this case uh, the condition often persists and it, the symptoms uh, improve over years and the third most common uh, lung disease due to occupational exposure include a uh, variety of disease and that is uh, due to the exposure to the inorganic dust like asbestos silica coal beryllium and uh, this inorganic dust are exposed to the patient uh, people who work in uh, mining industry or construction ship repair or um, sand blasting or in high tech industries and this all has contained uh, all this uh, exposure to inorganic uh, dust causes a variety of diseases and we'll be talking about very few of them which will be asked commonly in your mcqs uh, here you should know a term known as pneumoconiosis it's a permanent alteration of a uh, lung structure due to inhalation of mineral dust 
uh, and the, that is all the inorganic dust like uh, silica or coal or asbestos and the tissue reaction of the lung to its presence excluding bronchitis and emphysema that means a patient or a, a, a person is exposed to all the inorganic dust like uh, coal or asbestos or silico silica and the patient uh, develops uh, alteration in lung function or structure then that is known as pneumoconosis and the most common one is a uh, uh, due to the exposure to coal, silica, and asbestos. And the patient who developed the structural lung disease uh, due to exposure to coal are known as coal worker, known to have coal workers pneumoconosis. And in this case, uh, there is a dos laden alveolar macrophages aggregates to form a macules in the near or near the uh, in or near the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule and a fibrotic reaction ensues resulting in appearance of scattered discrete fibrotic lesions. And usually the thing that's uh, most asked in your MCQ is uh, in cold worker pneumoconosis, the most effective part of the lung is the upper lobes and in which there will be progressive massive fibrosis and uh, it refers to the formation of conglomerate masses. And the development of uh, progressive massive uh, fibrosis is usually associated with cough sputum that may be black, that is also known as melanoptosis and breathlessness. And in chest x-ray, when you suspect a patient uh, has a cold worker pneumoconiosis and you order a chest x-ray, and you, I, as I already told you, there will be a uh, mass like mass like lesion in just actually it could be confused like lung cancer TV and granulomatosis, granulomatosis with polyangitis angitis and uh, you should know that uh, even after the coal dose coal dust exposure ceases uh, progressive uh, fibrosis uh, also progress may progress and in extreme cases leads to respiratory failure and right ventricular failure. And here you should know next uh, most commonly asked uh, MCQ that is Kaplan syndrome and it is a combination of coexistence of rheumatoid arthritis with rounded fibrotic nodules uh, in the chest x-ray. Now moving on to silicosis, uh, it is a disease uh, that is uh, give, that is uh, that results from the inhalation of crystalline uh, silica usually in the form of quartz by the work cutting, grinding and polishing a stone. And usually uh, silicosis is most common and usually manifest after only 10 to 20 years of uh, continuous silica exposure. Uh, and in the between period of the time, the patient usually remains asymptomatic. So while asking the history, you should take the history from like around 10, what the patient was used to do even before 10, 20 years. And uh, in some cases, uh, due to intense exposure to very fine crystalline silica dust, it may also cause a acute disease that's known as silicoproteinosis. And in chest x-ray, similarly, similar to cold work pneumoconosis, uh, the predominantly the affected lobe are the mid and upper zones. And there is a typical chest x-ray finding that is XL pattern of calcification. And uh, since silica is highly phyrogenic and usually uh, disease is progressive, even after the exposure ceases, the patient has risks of development into lung cancer in the long run. And you should know that individuals who have silicosis are increased risks of tuberculosis, also known as silicotuberculosis, uh, lung cancer, and COPD. This is also very commonly asked and secure for you guys. Uh, now, in the looking at to the picture of the patient who have silicosis, uh, in the left you could see the chest X-ray and CT scan, and you can see that in the upper and middle, usually in the upper and middle row, lobe, there is rounded opacity, and in the right side you can see the gross specimen of the lung of the patient who has silicosis, and from outside only you can see that there are small rounded nodules in the usually in the upper and the middle lobe. Now moving to the next inorganic agent that causes a most commonly causes a organic lung disease and that is asbestos, and uh, it causes again a very wide spectrum of disease from lung and all the pleural disease and and asbestos is a naturally occurring silicate and it because of the very favorable thermal and chemical insulation properties uh, the asbestos is uh, very extensively used in the safe building and construction industries so there is a uh, very people who have got uh, exposure to asbestos and they have got a uh, large range of disease and there are very people very very large number of people who are suffering from asbestos and other diseases 
and the patient may be asymptomatic uh, and the patient may even present with uh, malignancy and the diseases that includes uh, due to exposure to asbestos include pleural plaques uh, and if in the chest x-ray that is given into your left you can see with a black arrow you can see there are the various pleural plaques and they are the patient with pleural plaques are generally asymptomatic and they only present to as an incidental finding while you, you do a chest x-ray however there are a second group of people who can present with acute benign asbestos uh, pleurisy the figure with the chest x-ray as given in the in your uh, right side and there are other diseases like diffuse pleural thickening uh, due to asbestos exposure. It's due to the thickening of the visceral pleura. And it may even in case of later progress, it's progressive. And in later uh, cases, it may cause restrictive lung function impairment, which lead to exertional uh, breathlessness and occasional persistent chest pain. And in X-ray, you could see the thickening of the pleura around the chest wall and obliteration of the costophrenic angles. And for this, the treatment is uh, uh, usually symptomatic. And in late cases, you can do surgical decortication. And uh, for all the patient who has a uh, pleural thickening due to the probable asbestos exposure, you should always look for the pleural biopsy so that you, have, you can rule out if the patient has malignancy of the pleura, also known as mesothelioma. The next thing that is uh, common in the patient with who are exposed to asbestosis is asbestosis. And it's usually patient usually present with exosternal uh, breathlessness and fine and late inspiratory crackles over the lower zone. As we have told, I have already told in patients who are exposed to coal and silica, the most commonly affected lung parts are the upper zone. And But however, in cases of the patient who are more exposed to asbestos, uh, the more affected zone is the lower zone. And in the patient with asbestosis, you may even find the patient having finger clubbing and uh, for the pulmonary function test and HRCT appearance, it is all similar to like that of interstitial disease. And uh, in most of the cases, the feature with the, if when you take the proper history of a uh, substantial exposure, expo asbestosis exposure, they are generally sufficient to establish the diagnosis and you really need a long biopsy. However, if you do a long biopsy, then you could see that there is alveolar septal fibrosis, uh, which is accompanied by an average of at least two asbestos body per square centimeter of the lung tissue. And asbestosis is uh, slowly progressive. However, it has better prognosis uh, than interstitial pulmonary fibrosis. And in cases of advanced uh, disease, the patient may have respiratory failure, pulmonary hypertension, and core pulmonary, core pulmonary. And in about 40% of the patient, and usually those who usually smoke, they develop uh, lung cancer, and 10% of them may develop mesothelioma. Now, moving to the mesothelioma, it's a malignant tumor affecting the pleura and or less common in the peritoneum and uh, the, if a patient has mesothelioma it uh, suggests that the patient has past history of exposure to asbestos which may be even at the low level and uh, typically uh, there is a long latent interval between the first exposure and on onset of clinical manifestation and uh, this account for the continued uh, in increasing incidence many years after the control measure have been impl imp implemented and the patient presents with increasing breathlessness which results from pleural effusion or unremittent chest pain reflecting uh, that there is already the involvement of the chest wall. And uh, for the patient who has mesothelioma, the survival is very low. So most uh, of in most of the cases, you may even uh, find out the patient has uh, mesothelioma only when we you do the postmortem studies. And invari invariably, this disease is very fatal. And for the patient who, who have got uh, mesothelioma, uh, usually it's uh, detected in the late stage. And if you could detect it early, then you can even go for radical surgery. Or otherwise, you can go for the chemotherapy. And that is only, that's not curative. That's all for palliative care. Even you can go for radiotherapy uh, to control pain and limit the risk of tumor uh, seeding or the biopsy site. And in case of the pleural effusion due to secondary to mesothelioma, it is managed with drainage and pleurodiasis. Now moving on to the next uh, disease that is caused by exposure to uh, inorganic dust that is beryllium that is berylliosis and uh, it is encountered in the airspace uh, engineering telecommunication and biochemical industries and even here also the patient present with cough progressive breathlessness nice so it's an arthralgia and the uh, and the radiographic appearance are similarly in type and distribution to those of sarcoidosis and biopsy so sarcoid like granulomas. So this is also very common MCQ that we may get. 
Now there are some terms uh, which are used uh, to denote the uh, uh, occupational lung disease uh, secondary to exposure to uh, some organic dust, inorganic dust, uh, like the in patient who are who have uh, lung disease due to exposure to iron oxide, they are known as cirrhosis. Uh, for the um, dust uh, barium, that is baritosis. For thin, that is that is stenosis, and for iron ore miners, it is hematite lung. And the next term is uh, popcorn worker's lung, and it is a form of obliterative uh, bronchiolitis following injection of the diacetyl used in butter flavoring. At least you should know the names and the causative agent only. And now moving to the fourth uh, part, that is lung disease due to the organic dust. And like in organic dust, there are very, uh, various organic dust uh, that causes a lot of uh, uh, occupational lung disease like uh, the dust uh, that cause the organic dust that can cause uh, lung diseases include cotton dust grain dust and other agriculture dust like fungal spore vegetable product insect fragments and the patient usually have the symptoms just like uh, copd asthma or chronic bronchitis or hypersensitivity pneumonitis and this all the uh, occupational lung disease due to organic uh, dust exposure results from a local immune response to animal proteins or fungal antigen in multi moldy vegetable uh, matter and among them hypersensitivity pneumonitis is the most common of the condition so we'll be discussing a little about the hypersensitivity pneumonitis it results as i've already told it results from the inhalation of wide variety of organic antigens that give rise to a diffuse immune complex reaction in the walls of alveoli and bronchioles and it's consistent with both type 3 and type 4 immunological mechanism and uh, as the patient gets exposed to the organic uh, dust uh, it results in activation of complement and an inflammatory response in the alveolar walls uh, characterized by the influx of mononuclear cells and foamy histocytes with poorly formed granuloma and which leads to peribronchiolar inflammatory infiltrates and in uh, chronic cases the patient even may develop fibrosis and the patient may have acute form to a more indolent pattern uh, which may be according to the antigen load and when you do a chest auscultation this is chest auscultation of such patient then you will find out the uh, widespread in respiratory crackles and squeaks and chest x-ray typically shows ill-defined patchy airspace shadowing and when you order a high resolution uh, computer tomography, then it will show bilateral ground glass shadowing and areas of consolidation superimposed on small uh, central over nodule op nodular opacities with an upper and middle lobe predominance. And as I've already told, it told you in more chronic diseases, uh, there will be uh, fibrosis features, fibrosis, uh, which leads to volume loss, linear opacities and architectural distortion. And when you do a pulmonary function test, it will show a restrictive ventilatory defect with reduced lung volume and impaired gas transfer. And for the diagnosis, uh, it's usually uh, clinical and radiological features uh, together with the identification of the potential source of antigen at the patient's home or the place of work. So uh, history taking is very important, like uh, when what the patient does and when does the patient has more symptoms, when the patient gets relief, and from when the patient started developing uh, symptoms, it's all of uh, importance. And also you can look for the uh, bronchoalveolar lavas. You can do a bronchoscopy. You can ask for a bronchoscopy and look at the bronchoalveolar lavas fluid. And it's such an increase in the number of CD8 plus T lymphocytes and transbronchial biopsy can also occasionally provide sufficient tissue for a confident diagnosis also you can do order for in case you get confused or you are not going to making the proper diagnosis you can also order a long biopsy now how to uh, you got a patient who has shortness of breath wheeze and especially well the patient work in the field and you diagnose the patient as a uh, patient has occupational lung disease due to exposure to organic uh, dust and how to manage such patient. For such patient, you must ask the patient to have cessation from the exposure. And in most of the cases, patients are farmer or they are the breadwinner of the family. So they may not uh, get rid of the exposure. In that case, you should ask the patient to 
uh, use the proper uh, protective equipment before they go go to the exposure and in acute cases you can use the medicine of choices prednisolone or steroid and that is given for three to four weeks with the dose of 40 milligram per kg in the tapering dose and in patient who has severe who are severely hypoxemic at that time they you may you can give the oxygen supplementation and most of the patient recover completely, but if unchecked and if there is repeated uh, exposure to the insulting agent, then the fibrosis may progress and the patient may later, later may present with respiratory disability, hypoxema, hypoxemia, pulmonary hypotension, core pulmonary, and eventually death from the pulmonary disease. And the other category that is uh, caused uh, by the occupational exposure includes occupational lung cancer. And as I've already told, in the patient who has uh, exposure to an organic dose like asbestosis, uh, they have increased risks of lung cancer, even uh, pleural cancer like mesothelioma. And if the patient has uh, exposure to uh, smoke, to smoke and tobacco, uh, then the patient has got a uh, high risk of development of the uh, lung cancinoma and there are other there are various other dust uh, or occupational uh, insulting agents like uh, radon gas, uh, beryllium, uh, diesel exhume fumes, cadmium, uh, chromium, and dust and fumes from coke plants. This all all also leads to increased risks of lung cancer. Okay, this is all for today. Thank you.